Hey, how's it going today, everybody? Hope everybody's having a great day out there. It is Wednesday, July 10th. I am getting unloaded in Waseca, Minnesota. I've tried to, I've goofed that name up like 80 times already today. So that's why I wrote it down. I read it to you. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about this load. Um, disclaimer, uh, the numbers are going to get dirty on this one. So if you've got anybody that's uh, weak stomach or uh, children in the room, you may want to send them out because this one is, this one's just nasty. Um, so here's the deal. I picked up this, uh, so on my last load, if you watched, the cucumber load uh, up to Chicago or Woodstock. So, I get there, uh, I did a video from there before they got me unloaded, uh, yeah, it took them, about, took them about seven hours, I sat there to get unloaded, I'm waiting to hear back if I get detention pay on that or not, uh, so I don't know, that one's, that one's up in the air, I literally have no idea whether I'm going to get detention pay or not on that one, but I had a load book that, uh, I had to call the broker, said, hey, I can't, I'm not going to be able to get there, you know, I'm supposed to be there at noon, um, the guy tells me, he says, all right, well, um, the broker tells me, all right, well, I got to move on with that one. You know, I got to put somebody else on that. I'm like, I totally get it. You know, like it's not, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I can't complain. I got no room to complain. I got a customer here that's tying me up. So what am I going to do? I can't complain at the broker about it. You know, I'm screwing him over too. Well, they're screwing me over. I'm not screwing anybody over. So, uh, you know the cucumber load that final destination on that they really they really put us all in a bind uh, shouldn't have taken seven hours to unload that you know it's 20 pallets uh, places like that really 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 get under my skin um, there's there's no call for that you know you you wasted my whole entire day and um, so anyway the broker actually was pretty cool about it he said hey get it it's not nothing you're doing um, he said, I do have another load coming out of the same place. And the other one was going like, I don't know, like 80 miles west of where I am right now. So he said, I got another one uh, coming out of there and it pays $9.50. And he said, I can, uh, you know, if, as long as you can get over there to pick up by 3.30, they will load you. This would have been yesterday. Uh, it's about 3.30 in the afternoon here now, about 3, I guess. Um, so yesterday, I said, okay, I'll do my best. I get out of the pickle place and literally showed up at 3.28 for this pickup, for this load. It was a frozen food load. Um, yeah. It didn't, it didn't pay as good. It was heavier. Uh, it was a lower temperature. Woo! Just, you know, losing on every level on that one. Um, so, the numbers of it was 450 loaded miles. Um, 115 deadhead on that. So, that's a lot of deadhead on that, that length of trip. But, you know, it's... Um, when it's late in the day and you can either set overnight and uh, you know hopefully you can grab something the next day that's moving in the direction you want to move in this is about 50 miles from my house where I'm at right now um, or probably a little bit more than 50 but it's about 50 to where I park my truck so um, you know I took it I took it and uh, you know, the main reason I've done it is because it was getting me back here. i got to get my AC system fixed. Um, you know, this thing blows cold one minute. It's nothing the next minute. No, you know, like, I'm pretty sure uh, someone left me a comment. Thank you for leaving that comment. I believe his name was uh, Moonlight or something like that. Uh, said it was the expansion valve. That's I was actually, when I seen that uh, comment come in, I was reading, you know, uh, YouTube and uh, Google trying to figure out what it could be and I kind of thought it might have been the expansion valve because I replaced some O-rings on it back in the spring. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get that fixed tomorrow. Hopefully that fixes my air conditioning situation. But that was the main reason I took this load is because I need to get back here to get my AC fixed, and I just wanted to get out of this truck as soon as possible because my APU is still down with the alternator I'm getting that fixed tomorrow as well. So I had no AC in the truck for like three days now. It's 
maybe once or twice a day it'll kick on and run cold air but you know like earlier today it was 90 degrees in Wisconsin it was 103 degrees in the truck with the windows down even it's just you know Freightliners aren't insulated that well so basically I'm sitting on top of a you know a Detroit cast iron um, you know uh, stove you know like your grandparents used to have in their house the old uh, cast iron stove that's basically what I'm sitting on top of here all day uh, roasting like a freaking marshmallow so uh, yeah I want to get out of this thing because I had to get, I got a hotel again last night and that'll be my variable cost um, it's the reality of trucking when it's when you parked it you know when I parked the truck last night I put it in a parking spot I went in a truck stop I grabbed some dinner took a shower goofed off in the truck stop you know I I went at Love's, you know, I was in there test fitting, uh, you know, medieval helmets and stuff, and uh, my head's too big for all of them, it sucks, man, it really bums me out, but, um, you know, I come back out, I turn the key on on the truck, and the temperature on the truck's still at like 190, 180, yeah, it's just not cooling off any, inside the truck, still like, you know, 98 degrees in the truck, I'm not sleeping at that temperature, I start melting at anything above 70, so um you know i'm not happy I, so i got a room that's uh you know that's a, that's 50 to 100 bucks a night that just in you, you know I, I had to get reefer fuel so i went down to this loves down the road from where i uh where i got loaded at and got reefer fuel because the negative 10 you know it ran it ran pretty hard you know because it was a hot day and uh you know just it, it ran hard and uh you know, so I get I get down to the Loves, and uh, the only hotel on that whole exit was one hotel, and you know, it wasn't a, it wasn't the cheapest hotel. Um, so you know, it's a reality of it. If your stuff's broke down, if you're an owner operator, keep that in mind. Like you know, factor that into your breakdown cost. Your your, your possibility you're gonna have to um, possibility you're gonna have to pay for a room on top of being broke down. Um, so yeah, nine fifty to the carrier. Sorry about the noise here. Uh, we're at shipping dock, and we are, you know, getting loaded. And uh, we know we got other trucks pulling in here, so we'll have to deal with that noise. We'll crank the wind up for a minute, and sweat it out. Anything for my viewers. Um, but anyway, uh, nine fifty on uh, to the carrier on this dollar sixty eight all miles. So that dead extra deadhead. Well, not extra deadhead, but that deadhead on that amount of miles. That that that's not never good. That's never good for your numbers. Uh, Seven sixty to me, uh, dollar thirty four a mile to the truck. Um, I'm gonna put out another video about being owner operator and like some of the costs that you know you really need to start factoring in if you're thinking about being an owner operator or if you're a lease purchase lease purchase driver and you think you're killing it. Um, you know, in your first three, four, five, six months. And then, uh, you know, when Uncle Sam comes calling and, you know, all these other little fees hit you. I know a lot of lease guys, they pay it weekly so it doesn't hit them at the end of the year. You know, their company makes them pay it in by the week. That way they get theirs no matter what, whether you quit the day before it comes due or whatever. So, uh, variable cost here, $300 in truck fuel. Uh, maybe a little bit more than what I've, uh, you know, put in more than I needed, but it was pretty close. I mean, it's not over by a whole lot. You know, we're hauling 40 plus thousand pounds of, uh, you know, of um, frozen food, and it's not light. And, um, you know, starting of the trip had about 60 miles of non freeway, and then the end of it here was about, uh, I don't know. 30 miles of non-freeway so you know you're looking at you know some stop and go some red lights stuff like that so fuel mileage wasn't that great so you know about 300 in truck fuel and that's with the loves discount i'm getting you know uh, i got that for 2.99 a gallon uh with the discount reefer fuel 122 on reefer fuel it's a frozen food load uh i definitely have more reefer fuel than i started with but um maybe 30 or 40 over on reefer fuel not a whole lot over i mean when it's a negative 10 degree load and it's 90 plus degrees outside you can expect to burn um you know i kind of figure it in as a gallon or maybe a little bit more than a gallon hey sorry about the interruption there they were bringing me my paperwork i am unloaded 
but yeah, I was saying 122 on the reefer fuel. That's about you know that's about what I use. Maybe maybe I would say at least 75 percent of that because I I factor it on a hot day with a negative degree load. Um, you know you're going you're going to ballpark about a gallon an hour. That's my experience. You know, but I don't run brand new trailers, so you make them out less. You buy brand new trailers. Uh, Sixteen dollars in def fuel. Uh, $32 in tolls to run around Chicago and uh, $115 or no, excuse me, $105 on a hotel last night. Uh, you know, I did what I had to do. I, went, I, I tried sleeping in here the night before. I did sleep in here. It was miserable. I slept maybe two hours. It was like 90 degrees in here all night. And then, uh, so that puts us at $575 on variable cost. Oof. Um, so after variable cost, $185 on this load, uh, 565 miles driven, uh, puts us at 32 cents a mile. Yeah. Yeah. That's what owner operators all about. Making money like you work at pound transport over here. Uh, it's not, they're not all wins guys. I'll just go ahead and be honest with you and let you know they're not all wins. You might have some that are killer, but you're going to have some duds too. Anyway, take care of each other out there, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Please like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff for me. Thanks for watching. Bye.